Hey, what's up? Jason here from U3D.College. Today I want to talk about the dry principle. So this is another software engineering principle and it applies to the code but also to just your project in general. There are some non-code parts to this, I think in Unity specifically. But first let's dive into a code example. So the, the entire principle is that uh, you should just not repeat yourself in code. So don't copy your code, don't just uh, do the same thing over and over. And there are a couple of reasons for that. The key one is just uh, maintainability. So if you have your code copied in a bunch of places, every time you change it, you need to change it in all of those places. And what typically happens is, you know, it's copied in 10 places, it gets fixed in nine, there's one that somebody missed, and then there are bugs. And you don't find out about these until players start reporting them or something just blows up. So let's go over a, a basic example here. I've got a character and this character has some health. It's got two particle systems that it plays. And then here's the current health. So we have, uh, it, in the start, we set our health to our max health. And then on trigger enter, we look to see if we get hit by a projectile. If there is a projectile in the thing that hit us, we instantiate an impact particle. And maybe we play some impact audio, play an impact animation. Then subtract the health based on the damage of the projectile. And if we're under or at zero, we play a, oh, not an impact particle, a death particle right here, and then destroy our game object. Not a super useful setup, but it, it would work and it's semi-realistic, right? Now, let's take this example though and imagine that we also added in an explosion effect. And the explosion doesn't go through on trigger enter. Instead, it's an object that finds all the characters in range and then tells them, you know, hey, deal with this explosion. So we could do something like this. We go like private or public void handle explosion. And maybe we pass in a damage amount for the explosion. And then in our explosion we go, okay, this does pretty much what this does. So we'll just copy this chunk of code right here. Oops. And paste it in the correct spot. And then we just have to replace this with the lowercase damage. And now everything works, right? So theoretically, technically, this would work. If our code calls handle explosion, we'd instantiate the particle, we'd play the audio, play the animation, and do all of the normal death stuff. And um, while this works, it totally goes against that dry principle because we're exactly repeating ourselves. We're doing a one-for-one -one copy of this entire chunk of code right down here, and we don't need to. There's an easier and cleaner way to do this. So instead of copying all that, what we should do instead is uh, take this chunk of code and hit control period or right click and hit extract method, hit enter, and we'll call this uh, take damage. Now you may notice that we can't just call this take damage from handle explosion. And I wanted to show that because just doing this extract like that isn't exactly going to work because we don't want to pass in the projectile. What we care about in this method is just the damage amount. So there are a couple ways we could do this. We could just change this up here and go like int damage. And here we just pass in projectile that damage and change that to a lowercase version. That would work. Um, we could also change it up and redo our refactor. Um, yeah, let's do that too. I'll just show you the other way to do it. So another way to do it would be like to declare a damage here. So like int damage equals projectile dot damage and replace it right there. Then I take this chunk of code, control period, extract method, and now I'm getting one with damage. Uh, so take damage. And this is less useful when you only have one parameter. Sometimes when you have multiple, it's a little bit easier and easy, quicker to understand what's going on if you just prepare some parameters there and do the extract. But I think in this case, it doesn't really matter. And we could actually just kind of cut that, put that there and be right back where we started. But now when we have it set up like this, what we can do is just take this one take damage call, paste it right in here and just pass in damage instead of projectile that damage and we're done. And now when we want to change this, so we want to add in, uh, maybe we want to remove the animation. We don't want to play impact animations anymore. Now I've removed it in one spot and it's updated for both spots because we're not repeating ourselves, we're not repeating the code, we're just calling it in one single spot, we're calling it from multiple points. Now, 
I also talked about um, th this not just applying to code in Unity, and that's because of prefabs. So say I've got a character set up, and you know this guy's got 150 health, he does something, has some particles on him. I'm not gonna assign anything right now. But just say we've got this character set up in our scene, and we wanted to make another character, we could just duplicate him, move it over, and um, now duplicate, move it over again. And this would work, again, just like copying our code, but we'd still end up with that same problem of, you know, if I change this guy, so he's got 100 health, now these ones don't update. Now, if you're used to Unity, of course you know that the solution here is to keep it dry and just make a prefab. So drag the capsule down in the project view, becomes a prefab. And now when I duplicate this guy, move it over here, duplicate again and move it, oh, not scale it, move it. Then when I change one, you know, I can change it to 120, I can hit apply and they all update. So this is just another way of following that dry principle. So yeah, this is one of those principles that I think it's, it's easy to understand the value. It's easy to forget to do it as well. And uh, when you see it in other people's code, it really becomes noticeable when you find lots of copy pasted stuff or just lots of objects placed that aren't prefabs that really should be where they're having to go in and change things. You know, a whole bunch of stuff every time they wanna make a modification to the game. So I hope this uh, video is a little bit helpful. If it is, don't forget to hit thumbs up, share it with your friends and subscribe. And thanks for watching.